OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network It, um, it's an amazing thing to me. And uh, we are at the beginning of it, although it's been around a long time, but we are at the beginning of it in adult ed. And I think as you see it, you will find applications for yourself and for your schools and um, definitely, definitely for your students. And so I'm excited for it today. My name is Debbie Jensen. I was a basic skills instructor at Baldwin Park adult for over 30 years. Um, today, I focus all my time on OTAN and my grandchildren. <laughs> um, I'm a CK-12 certified instructor, and I today get to share this um, presentation with Lindsay Kincaid, who is a CK-12 wizard, and she's, she's magnificent, and the good news is she's the person who's going to help you when you go and ask for help. We will be giving you a contact information at the end, and she's the one that will be there. So... Um, she's always there whenever I've needed any help, any questions, she's always there. So that's great. And then Netta has spearheaded this project because of her great love for CK-12 and how much she saw that it would help us as adult educators. Um, so let's let Netta talk first and tell us about things. Yes. So I have to share, I always like to share my beginning story with CK-12. I attended a session and it was at a Go Open event. And the Go Open is, is a movement for open educational resources. And I just entered that realm and I have a lot of love for folks that are going to be able to share resources, teachers to share resources that are free and accessible for our students. And we need that in adult ed, right? Our funding is always shifting from here and there. So um, when I attended the session, it was very K-12 heavy. And I thought, my gosh, you know, if we can only see what the value, you know, some of these pieces in K-12, how we can use it in, in adult ed. At the time, I was the coordinator of adult education at a local agency. And my teachers needed additional resources. First of all, our textbooks were very old. I mean, their stamp dates were 1989 or 1991, et cetera, et cetera. And so talking about investing thousands of dollars in updating these textbooks but we just didn't have the funding. So how can I be, how can I bring some of these resources to my adult secondary education teachers for high school diploma or high school equivalency that can, um, that our students can utilize and be able to pass some of their tests or finish their credits and so on. So um, I was just, mesmerized and in love as soon as I saw CK-12. So I started the relationship with um, Lindsay and her um, predecessor or the per or one of her coworkers who's no longer with CK-12 anymore, and that's Carl. And we just had these conversations. So we, I got my CK-12 educator light, um, certification and started playing around with it. Carl said, hey, what do we need to do? We started doing some of these sessions at conferences, but then we kind of figured out, hey, you know what's gonna really help adult educators is having a space on CK-12 so that they know that the resources are available for the adult students. Um, and you know what? It's been a little less than two years and they made that happen for us. So we're very grateful for our partnership with CK-12. They listened to the needs of our adult learners. They've listened to the needs of our adult educators and they did exactly what we asked for. And that's partner with us to create a space on the CK-12 platform. Um, that's pretty huge for us. So we have to say we are humbled and so appreciative for the, this partnership. It's just, um, you'll learn today from what you're gonna learn from this presentation, how magnificent this resource is and how it's going to help your learners. Um, and to know that you now, as an adult educator, have a home and a space there for your learners is even more, um, you know, heartwarming and, and perfect for, for our space for our, for our learners. So with that being said, I'm very grateful to have um, this partnership and this, these relationships with our friends at CK12 and grateful for Debbie being the, lead, the leader in making this happen for us. So um, that's all for me, but we are very excited about our shortly URL to ck12.org slash adult ed. That's our space, our adult ed space. Thank you so much. And I'll hand it back to Debbie. Thank you, Netta. Um, that website is, if you want to be going along with us as we're going along and do that double screen, that's where you'll go because you'll be able to kind of play along with us. 
Um, if you don't want to, it's okay because we're going to show it to you and we're going to go live. Um, that's one of the things that Lindsay is going to do later is that all of the questions that you want to ask, whenever they happen, just put them in the chat and she's manning the chat. She will answer the questions there, but she'll also kind of keep track of, well, what kind of things are you guys interested in so that when we get to the live, we'll know where to go with that. Okay, so our objectives for today, um, we're going to go through uh, our slides and then live and then um, then we'll give you the contact information. Um, I'm going to show you my journey um, and um, how to do things. Okay, Lindsay, this is your slide. Yeah, no, again, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I love hearing you guys talk about um, how CK-12 is, you know, impacting um, this, this segment of educators and learners, and um, it's, it's, it's amazing. So I've been with CK-12 for about five and a half years now, and um, just to give you a little context of who CK-12 is, is we are a nonprofit out of Palo Alto, California. And so we've been around since 2007, and absolutely everything on our site is free. Um, you won't see any advertising. You won't ever hit a paywall. There's not like a, a, a freemium premium version. There's, 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 not, there's nothing like that. Um, our mission is just to make education accessible to everyone all around the world and all types of learners. And um, so anyway, so that's, that's, that's exciting, but I'm not here to sell you anything. This is where this is all here for your taking. So find which part of this that like you, you enjoy that you think will, will, will have impact and um, start using it right away without any barriers. Um, so that's awesome. But we do have millions of users. Again, we're, we're not quite a household name that we would like to be yet, but we're, we're big in the education space. And especially during um, coronavirus times, you know, it's just, we've, we've been very popular as have all online solutions, um, but we're, we're pleased to be an answer for, for so many people. Um, if you go to the next slide, Debbie, of uh, just wanted to say that sometimes people think that, oh no, free, you know, what does that mean? Does that still mean that the quality is there? And so I just want to assure you that we are the top quality content, that our content was created by people with PhDs, and we've got collaborations with NASA scientists. Um, and then these are living books. These are books that you're able to customize if you choose to. Um, and our team is always improving. So um, things like coronavirus, you're going to find those in our books. Um, they, you know, Pluto's a planet that's not a planet, there's a planet. Um, anything that's ever changing like that, or the, the Mars landing, um, all of that can be in our book instantaneously that, you know, it isn't something that those books collecting dust on the, the, the shelves um, quite are able to do. So um, just know that we are, we are always making changes and improvements and keeping it current. And then um, we have the right people who have their hands in these books. Um, and then the other mission of CK12 is to make everything accessible. So all of our developers um, from, from day one, really, we've been trying to make it platform agnostic. So we're going to work on your Macs, your PCs, your tablets, your phones, um, you know, your desktop computers, and then any customized Flexbook can also be downloaded as a PDF. So for people who need offline access, um, you know, we're, we're proud of all the digital interactive things that we can do. So you lose a little bit when you take our content offline, but um, sometimes you have to. And so you are able to take the text um, and print some PDFs if you need to as well. Um, so Debbie's going to talk to you just kind of about the breadth of, of what we offer. We're, we're pretty robust. We offer a lot of things, but she's, she's really pared it down to, I think, what is going to help you the most in working with the adult um, learners and adult educators. And so we're going to let her talk and I'll, um, I'll man the chat window for a little bit. And then again, um, I'll, I'll pop on at the end and kind of do any live demoing that, that, might, that might be helpful to you to, to show you um, more about CK-12. Thanks, Lindsay. Okay, think about it. If you had a wish list, what do you want most as a teacher? And it's to be able to meet the needs of every student. But traditionally, we've always had to satisfy the needs of the majority, knowing that some of the needy students were slipping through the cracks. Enter technology. Today, with the help of technology, we can individualize assignments and offer them in more than one modality. But now think better still. Now there are customizable digital textbooks with interactive content, including adaptive practice, simulations, interactives, and study guides. CK-12 has offered teacher assistance to our classrooms to give insights into what our teachers need to know about their students. At CK-12, they recognize that all people everywhere learn in their own way. So technology at its best should assist learning. 
So CK12 has accepted that challenge and they join technology with quality content. Then they equip students and teachers with everything they need to access the resources and assess the student learning. To top it all off, they've created a platform for you to take your existing content, the things you use every day, and modify or add to the CK12 in your text. Um, you can even start from scratch with a blank Flexbook 2.0 and create your own resource completely. So what it means is you have a smart 21st century Flexbook 2.0 that it can include video, interactive simulations, assistive practice that assesses student progress and guides the learning, making the problems, questions more difficult or less difficult depending on the student. And if the student is struggling, suggesting other media such as videos or real life applications. As you can see, this is the list of subjects and I had to change this slide two days ago because it changed. And that's one of the other things about CK12 is you can come back and things will be bigger, all the time bigger. As you can see, they have lots of subjects available. The list gets longer. Their very first digital efforts were in the STEM courses, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But they've branched out, including courses made by community partners. And new, and you need a drum roll here, as of March 2nd, notice this section, adult education. Across the top of the dashboard, you're going to see different ways to connect to content. Because with so much available, well, how do you find what you want? Take time to explore it. When you find something you like, just click on it and say add to your library. It kind of collects it all for you. After I began searching for material for my math class, the very next time I got back on to CK12, they had recommendations for me. And that's what you see in the one area. Um, at two, you can search by standards aligned to the Flexbook. At three, you can do concept maps. And at four, you can use just a regular search in the search bar for your topic. Their textbooks have always included interactive activities and quizzes, but recently they ramped it all up with their Flexbook 2.0 dot o series these textbooks have added simulations real world examples and practice that adapts to the student's performance they use artificial intelligence to first recognize what the student doesn't understand and then adapt the digital digital response to the student's needs their resources include flexbooks 2.0 regular flexbooks that was their originals adaptive practice simulations plex which stands for play learn interact and explore and study guides they also have concepts grouped by common core and ngss standards um, they include a list of districts and schools that are using their materials when I was first introduced to CK12 I was thrilled that subjects were taught to the strengths of the students visual kinesthetic, etc. But now not only are subjects presented to different strengths, but student performance is analyzed, strengths and opportunity, areas of need to help, they're all uncovered. You'll know where your students are struggling, and then they make suggestions for what to do with that information. CK12 will organize your students into a digital classroom and access an intelligent grade book that easily displays what the students are doing and reveals patterns. So that is one of the ways they can address the grading portion for you. They kind of just take care of it. But you can also um, use your own LMS. Uh, if you're doing Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, and they're even opening up to more. Um, I was using Google Classroom, so I didn't want to use um, uh, CK12's grading platform of creating the class there. And I moved it right into my Google Classroom and it was just very smooth. Last year, Flexbooks 2.0 took off. And see, now it's probably not last year. It's probably a year before that. <laughs> um, so that's when I thought this year, there's, they're even better. They're always improving. Um, just yesterday, I changed the slides for this presentation because more has been added and improved to empower not just the teacher, but also the student. Um, Okay, so let's look and see what simulations are like. And again, because this is static, you're going to have to just do a little imagining. But look at the topics. There, this is physics. Uh, they also have chemistry. Um, the physics sections include driverless cars, scientific measurement, metric units, unit conversions, rockets and acceleration, 
and prom night when reflection mirrors and plane mirrors are explored. So they take what's happening in the real world and then they show you the science and the, the behind it. PLIX again stands for play, learn, interact and explore. The activities allow the student to experiment, to change one thing and watch how the other thing adapts to it. So they get to, to experience what would happen if they were kind of in a lab doing it. Um, on this page, we're looking at the mathematics ones on the one and the life science on the other, such things as uh, order of operation. What would change if some value changed? Uh, introduction to a combining in integers, simple interest, rounding, um, natural selection, ecosystems, the water cycle, chemical reactions, pH, and, and that's the tip of the iceberg. Now, I know you probably don't think study guides are much of an impressive thing. They've been around forever, but I really love their study guides. These study guides were created with the assistance of, of students, and they allow the student to underline and annotate in, in the uh, study guides as well. So they're, they're wonderful. And then da, 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 here's our partnership. This email, no, no, I'm saying the wrong word. This website address that you're seeing is the one that was good up till yesterday. Now we have the shortened one. They both work, but you can see how they're trying so hard to get everything ready for today so that we could launch this and you can get to this. Now, eventually they'll make it so that when you go to that page that has all of the different subjects and you saw the adult ed section circled, that you'll be able to click there and get to it. That's coming, they're still working. I don't know when they sleep, but that's what they're doing. So this is us and this is now. Now, right now, the sections that we are doing with the adult ed education section are ABE and ASE diploma and high school equivalency. But we are anxiously trying to also get CTE up there. There is so much that is in CK-12 that the CTE teachers will love and be able to use. But what we need is we need teachers of those courses to put together what you need for automotive or what you need for culinary or cosmetology or whatever it is. And then we can create those courses, post those courses, and they'll be available to everyone. It's really, really exciting. So I'm just going to scroll down through the adult ed uh, education section and just show you what you're going to see. The first part is ABE. Right now, the focus is math. And these were made by different people. So when you look at it and you say, well, why do you have four math courses for ABE? The reason is they were made by different people and they dealt with what their class needed. That's one of the cool things. You take a look at the table of contents of any course. If you don't like something, get rid of it. If you wanna move it because you teach it in a different order, move it. If you have a, a activity that you use that you want to include, add it. This one is a high school diploma and equivalency. And you can see that we already have 16 courses up there. Um, the ones that are included for, we've got US history, US government, economics, biology, chemistry, physics, pre-algebra and algebra one, that's for high school. The equivalency ones were foundational math, algebra basics, geometry, data statistics and probability, algebra, and then again, we have other teachers that have also put courses in. And so they looked at things differently. And so we have mathematics companion and science companion, and then the science for high school equivalency, um, which was one of my favorites because if you look at science, it's big. But if you look at what's required for the GED or the um, high set, it's this, you don't need this. And what the teacher did is she pared it down. So it's already been done for you. It's so exciting. Another thing that I'm excited by is this. This was one of the teachers who thought that her adult students might need a little help in maneuvering around in CK-12. So she made a series of little videos. They're all here in this introduction. And you can have the introduction and just add it to whatever course you have. She was teaching them how to use Plix, how to take notes and highlight, how to learn to uh, use reading. It's her section is called Learning Through Reading. Um, it's, it's exciting. I want to put it in all my courses. Okay, the very next section asks, are you an educator? Are you a student? 
Now let's pursue each one. If we're an educator, they are gonna give you three steps to get started. Create a class, find your Flexbook, assign your students. And each one of those they'll take and walk it through for you. Um, they discuss that there's more than just Flexbooks. And that was one of the things that I hadn't even realized at first was you can take pieces, snippets, um, just an adaptive practice that you want to just add to your class. You don't have to take the whole lesson. You can just take the adaptive practice or a Plix activity or a simulation. And so that means you truly do have thousands and thousands of things to look at. Um, then they take you to what they call a deeper dive with strategies for how to use your CK-12 Flexlix, which started for COVID. There are many courses which are wonderful because it's like they've boiled out and just kept the most and most important things. And so definitely you're wanting to look through those because they're great. Um, how to customize and get started with either Canvas or Schoology is right there. Um, now, let's look as a student because I hope that we've wowed you with what they do for you as a teacher. We're gonna make it bigger. Let's look at what it goes for the student. Um, they have a little character and I, I asked my grandson what it looked like and he said, it's an orange friend. I thought it looked like a chiclet, but that's okay. <laughs> they have this little orange guy that's down here in the left bottom corner and he's there in everything that the students do. So what does he do? Well, he assists in their learning, um, providing immediate feedback to help the students learn the concepts. He'll also answer their questions and provide interactive examples. He'll test their student learning by asking relevant questions at their skill level. He helps with assignments with hints, recommendations, and reinforcement. He'll provide reminders of upcoming assignments and topics that need to be reviewed or that's unfinished that the student needs to do and they haven't done it yet. Uh, he helps keep the students on track. And then he also helps them with self-reflection. Cool. <laughs> All right, so we're continuing scrolling down the adult education um, web page. And so here they go and review once again, the various things that are available. And again, always, always remember that there's more to come that there's always things are expanding and growing. One of the things that, again, was important to me was I used Google Classroom, and so I wanted CK12 to go in there. And so they do. They'll integrate, integrate with your own um, LMS systems. This was fun for me. It was daunting. They have hundreds of testimonials, and each one of these teachers are going to tell you a different insight. We had space for nine. So I listened to everybody and I tried to figure out which ones I thought would be the best for us. But let me share some of the things that they've said. Um, we have the director of the Coeur d'Alene School District who wanted his students to investigate and experience lessons, to go at their own pace and design their own learning. Um, we, with CK-12, teachers can tailor their own flex books with their own materials. Another teacher, told of a student who was complaining that he couldn't do his homework because he didn't have a computer at home. And the student sitting beside him said, dude, just use your phone. <laughs> so That's cool, especially for our adult students. In the next video, we have a teacher that was complaining that he was in science and everything was always dated. No matter when you bought the textbooks, it's dated the next day. This is this is even worse with U.S. history. Um, how would you know about uh, the things that have happened just recently in our textbooks? It's not there, but it is and can be here. And that's remarkable. Um, the community tab contributes all sorts of things. And it's fun to see what they've created, what they've gathered. It's like you've got all these different people gathering from all over and you just get to pick. And so it's cool. Um, the, the books that you create are living documents. One teacher liked the adaptive practice very much because she always knew where every student was, knew how much time they'd spent, how, which ones that gave them trouble. And we will look at this a little bit later, um, just how helpful the information they give is. The next teacher loved the flexibility. 
she no longer needed to take materials home because all she had to do was have her flex book and then she could just, it was always there. Um, the next is a science teacher and she just flatly says, after she's done several of these, but this one was my students love it. They love the fact that the learning is in their hands and that they can, if they're more interested in one topic, they can go with it. If they need more help in a topic, they can go with that. And it's, it's, it empowers the students. Um, the next one, um, the gentleman in the bottom in the middle said, there's so much more than flexbooks here that when he has any topic that he's teaching, he just puts it in the search bar. And then he's got many, many things that he can look at to improve his lessons. Um, and then the last lady, and this one's really for us. She talked about a father who was trying to help his child with their schoolwork. And he wasn't really good at English. And so he was apologizing and she said, that's okay. CK-12 can change the language to over 90 languages. Isn't that adult education? <laughs> we can reach everyone, so it's all exciting. All right, so this was my experience. Okay, so I used the subjects and the explore buttons. You can also use the search box to write in what you're looking for, okay? Um, I wanted, this originally was a math course that I needed help with. I needed some math lessons. And so I first, because I'm adult ed, and I'm in basic skills, I was using arithmetic. And so that's what you see at one. At two, I wanted to focus on fractions because they just were struggling with that. And then again, I could uh, dig down deeper and go into comparing fractions using pictures. Um, and then I wanted the adaptive practice so that I could see how the students were doing in what we had assigned them. Now, I just also recently worked with the CK-12 Algebra Basics for High School Equivalency. This is one of our new courses. And to work with this course, you pick it. Then the green button that says choose, you click on that. Uh, you have choices of assigning it right, right from the get-go, or you can add it to your library. So if you're not, you're planning on working on this one, then add it to your library. You can customize it. And that's what you're gonna do when you're gonna look at all the table of contents and decide what you want. But also notice the, down, the downloading the PDF. Now, if you put it in PDF form, you're gonna lose the interactives, obviously, because it's not online. But some school districts, this is what they need. And so that is available to you as well. Um, this is, if when I clicked uh, customize, this is what I get. There's the table of contents. You see the ordering of the math. If I don't teach it in that order, I can turn it around. I can change it the way I want to. Um, I can add my own lessons here. Over to the right side, you see the little edit icon so that there's things that I can change and add there. But at the very least, make it yours. Put a picture of your school on it. Put the title that this is, this is your school's textbook. You know, And that's very, very simple to do. Um, now, again, I've been working on this for a few years. Um, I just, Lindsay, I love her to death. She taught me this and I'll owe her forever. Uh, whenever I was doing it, I would have to go back up to the original and track my school and track me over and bring me down. And, you know, I mean, I could get around, but it was slow and it was tedious. Well, no, this is what you want to do. You go up to your profile and then there is a shortcut list. So you can go directly back to your classes or directly back to your library. It's all right there and you can move quickly from one thing to another. If you're going to be using CK-12 and use them to house your class, then that's the next step. You create a class. Um, they're going to store the textbook at CK-12. They're going to link to it. They're going to assist you with all the record keeping and the evaluation of the students. Or you can use an LMS. And they this list grows. So if you're not classroom canvas or Schoology, but you're another, that's a question to see if, if that one is being worked on, if it's how soon it will be done and that kind of stuff, because they are adding LMS um, transitioning to the to, to use it. Okay, so and, and I'm just showing you how quickly it was for me with using um, Google Classroom. They asked me for my account and the classroom that I'm going to attach it to, and then I clicked on it and moved it forward. They said, you've done a great job. The lesson appears in classroom, class works in my classroom. This is what the student sees. 
going on to where it's circled, that is, you can see the little CK12 logo. That's the lesson. And it's right there available for the student to use. And there's the grade. And so my work's been done. It's very, very nice. Now, there's a few last items. The community partners don't not look there. That is huge. CK-12 has huge amounts of material, but the community partners, many of them were looking at things like, well, you don't have an economics course and my high school needs, my high school students, my diploma students need a economics course. And so school districts got together, worked with the, um, their standards and making sure that everything was aligned and they created these. So in the community partners, you will find many things that will be very helpful to you. Um, CK-12 will monitor the assignments as the student works. Uh, you can't be everywhere, but they can. And there's many, many, many choices that you're going to be able to do. Um, I was before the COVID um, struck, I was preparing a presentation to all of our CTE teachers to try and just show them what was available that they would be able to use. And it, it's impressive. There's so much that can be done. And I love the grades and reporting. This is a picture of the schools um, that have embraced. These are just in California. There's every, all around the world, um, including Sweetwater, uh, Santa Barbara Unified School District, Fremont High School, Poway. Um, okay, so I'm going to do it once more so you don't forget anything. Uh, there's tens of thousands of free customizable STEM resources and the resources are growing daily. You get help in gaining insights about student performance and content that can be assigned to the students to meet each one's needs. Assignments can be made for the entire class or differentiated for groups or for individual students. Personalized learning at its very, very best. Um, now, again, I had thought my presentation was all done, and then Lindsay and I got together, and this is new, but it's really amazing. Okay, on the left, you're going to see a lesson. This is on integers in the real world. There's that flexi guy on the bottom left where there's the little one beside it. That's him. So we're seeing the, the textbook. We're inside the, the flex book. Now, up at the top at the right where the number two is, there's a little lightning icon, and that's going to take you to insights. But the problem that they were finding was that you can't see insights and how it works unless you have a class. Well, you don't have a class yet, <laughs> and so you can't see how it works. So they created a demo class so that now we can really show you what it looks like and in, in, in see how cool it is. Okay, so we're going to click there, go to the demo class, and you'll see it in the graphs that are of the engagement and the skill level. You will see the class performance level. This one's from low to high. We can reverse it. You see the students that haven't turned it in. It's all right there. And then this is the cool. Notice the little icons, the smiley faces and the frowny faces. OK. This is only three out of nine students who turned in this assignment have reached the adaptive practice goal of answering 10 questions correctly. And you're going to go, oh my, what now? But then they re recommend to you, remind the students to complete the goal of answering 10 questions correctly. Down at the bottom, three students in your class are doing exceptionally well on this concept. And then they tell you the names of the students. So you know who's doing really, really well and who's not. The second one, they give you some more help. Um, the top four questions that students have answered incorrectly are noted below. And so here are related paragraphs and questions to help them. It's done for you. It's so exciting. All right. So I asked you at the first, what if your textbook could engage every student anywhere using any device 24 seven and it was free? Well, that's here and that's now. At first, I wasn't sure how to integrate it in my class. But it was kind of like I went to a conference and they had um, 3D printers. And I looked at it and I thought, hmm, interesting. I could not think of any way to put that in my class. This is the excitement that we have by living today and seeing all of the amazing things that can be done. 
and CK-12 is right there. This is cutting edge and it's there for your students. All right, now I'm going to stop here and we're going to now look at the chat, see what the questions are and what we can do to help. There well, we, we haven't had any questions really coming in yet. So maybe now is a good time to just stop and pause either verbally if you all want to you know, unmute yourself and ask a question since it's a smaller group here, or if you wanna put some questions in the chat. Again, um, I'm gonna be going live to the site and kind of showing you, you know, how you would onboard yourself and get started. Um, but based on what, what, what Debbie's shown you, what are some of the immediate um, questions that we could help answer for you? Hi, this is Jacqueline Cisneros from West Contra Costa Adult Ed. Um, yeah, um, I'm wondering, um, I'm so happy about the adult um, ed content. I, I just have to say, because um, I became familiar with CK12 probably about two years ago. And that was something that I was looking for. So I'm glad to see that there, but I'm looking, so I see that math I think is good. I love the GED, re, the HSE resources, but I was wondering about like the adult basic ed English. Um, I know that you guys are into the science, technology, engineering kind of side, but I was wondering about the English resources. And I also had another question about um, the community content. Like, is there someone who goes through and vets them, vets the content to make sure that it's okay? Because I know there's some school districts where, you know, they have some different ideas of how history is, should be explained and it's not history, it's their interpretation or what they want people to believe about it. So I was just wondering about that process. Um, can any, is it like Wikipedia where anyone can get high or drunk and just throw stuff up on the platform? <laughs> or is there someone who's like looking at it saying, uh, you know, let me flag this because this looks a little sketchy. That's all. Sure, well, let me jump in on both of those as again, the CK12 representative here. Um, uh, I'll take your last question first, which is the community content of how that works on our site. Um, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen right now and just, and just show you. Uh, basically, we have kind of a, a partition on our site where we very carefully um, segment what is CK-12 and what is community contributed. Um, so for instance, if you were looking for, um, well, what were you asking? You were asking about like language arts. Um, CK-12 from the get-go was always math, science, and then a smattering of other STEM subjects. And we are developing with partners other content. So you are um, not wrong in your assessment that you're not seeing a whole lot of English right now. Um, I think that's an area of growth for us that uh, we're, we're looking to do. In fact, I was talking to my, um, my, my the founder, our executive director about this. And I said, what happens when all these adult ed folks are really excited about uh, our offerings, but they want us to make sure that we're covering all of the um, all of the subject areas that are required. And she said, well, we're just gonna have to document those requests and see if, see if we can get on that. So, um, so your request has already been documented for that. Um, but one way to, to find the difference between CK12 content and community contributed content is I just searched for something up here in the search bar. And then notice that anything under CK12 content says that it's been created by CK12, created by CK12, created by CK12. And then the community contributed content so these are folks who have, um, I'd say the majority of them have probably taken one of our Flexbooks and made some customizations to it. So it's still gonna largely be CK12 content, but we put it here under this community contributed tab just to make sure that it's clear to you all that no, CK12 has not given it any sort of a stamp of approval. No, our team of 35 people has not gone, have not gone through each of these books. Um, but you can see that Michaela Bates um, worked on this third grade language arts book and you can open it up. And again, maybe she's got some starter content in there that would work well for you that you could pull into a book that you're creating. Um, so we find that there's value in keeping the community contributed out there for everybody, even though we haven't um, vetted them all. And our process is different from um, Wikipedia. We, we don't do any sort of collaborative editing in the same way. So we don't have, you know, live text being updated. Um, Michaela is totally in charge of this book. And when she makes updates to it, she has to actively publish the book to um, kick those updates over to the site. 
and um, they again would be under this community contributed tab. So um, for you all who are thinking about creating content or uh, modifying our content, just know that it doesn't automatically show up in these search results. There is that, that privacy as you're still working on it that you have to elect at the end of the process to press publish and make it searchable for everybody else, um, which hopefully if you've created something awesome, you'll do that. But, um, but, there, but there's no pressure. Some people are weirded out of like, are people gonna see in live time what I'm working on? And, and that's, that's not how the site works. We take it in little incremental steps. Um, so, so no on the English yet. Um, but I think that's definitely an area that we're hoping um, that you're going to be seeing on, um, if I go back to our homepage here, um, on our adult education page soon. Um, but Debbie's, Debbie, who helped um, curate and, and create these books, um, she was basically working off of CK-12's core offerings. So most of them are in math and science. And then these US history ones, and to answer your question of these books specifically, were in part of our partnership with El Paso Independent School District. And so we made the note of that here um, because you're right, it is important, especially in areas of social studies, you know, who's, 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 telling, who's telling the version of this. So we made sure to clearly mark that. Um, so this is aligned to the Texas Teaks and this was originally created in partnership with El Paso. Um, but again, you can go through this and see which of these um, <clears throat> units you think are of value. And if there are some that you are not a fan of or you need to add more, that's where coming down and pressing customize and dragging and dropping and rearranging and all of that um, works for you. So that's kind of how to read what's going on with our authors and descriptions and things like that. Hello, I have a question. Well, not really a question, but just, okay, so <laughs> I'll explain it. I, um, so I went to this, the CT12, um, Thing at TDLS like two years ago, two or three years ago, and I was so excited and I brought it all back to everyone and nobody was really interested. Just because we weren't really going, not not because of everything, it's just because we weren't really going the online route and they just were happy with the books, everything that we had. Well, obviously now with COVID, it's kind of switched a little bit. I was wondering if you could send me information so I could pass it on to um, the powers that be at my school to see if you can start this process again, because I really feel like right now we have an online program, but it's like if the students want to go more with a book, this would be a great option for them. Totally. And I'll give you my contact information or I'll show you just how to get in touch with me on the CK12 adult ed um, page at the bottom. Cause this is going to be probably the, your starting point for a lot of CK12 journeys here at the bottom. Um, it says still have questions, email us at partners at ck12.org. And I'm the person who um, goes through all of our partners uh, requests. So if you just want to send a quick email and say, hey, I was in your TDLS session, send information to, you know, my whoever your colleagues are at these email addresses or whatever, I'll, I'll be happy to, to help do whatever I can. And that's okay. Okay. an online demo, a virtual conversation, an email, whatever can kickstart that conversation. Okay. Thank you so um, much. Because I think this is just a, such a great, like, such a great thing. I just trying to get everyone else on board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like we were CK 12 was kind of ahead of the times for a long time that people weren't ready to get rid of their printed textbooks, you know, still going through traditional adoption cycles. And I feel like the past couple of years, just the nature of open educational resources and how teachers are sourcing from so many different places anyway, and putting them in a learning management system of, you know, we're, we're just, we're one of those tools. And again, we're, we're free and we're one that, you know, 13 years in the industry, we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna fold in the next couple of days. We're here to, we're here to stay. So I think there's confidence in that as well, which is, a, I know a concern is teachers are always, you know, oh, they're introduced this new platform and this new thing. And um, we, we aren't, we aren't new. We've, we've, we've been here for, for quite a while. Lindsay, one of the things that I had the same thing with my school district. I came in, I was so excited. And so I put it in my class so that it was there, so that my students started talking about it with other students. Then I went to specific teachers and said, hey, you should get on. And I didn't get the warm clapping response I wanted. So you know, I, know the, I know what you're up against. But here's the thing. We've got to get the administrators on board. And um, OTAN is going to be having, and others, a series of webinars and we're going to be at every conference and so please 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 
put a bug in your administrator's ear to come to them at those conferences. We're going to be at CCAE, we're going to be at the CASA Summer Institute, and there's others. Netta can tell us more about them, about all the ways, because we know, I mean, we thought that we would have a lot of people here. You are the wonderful ones, and we are so appreciative of you. But this is, it's not a hard sell, it's just a mind shift, and that's one of the challenges. So have your administrators attend the sessions so that we can address their questions and help them. And Kim, we're doing, yeah, like Debbie just said, we're going to have on the adult ed calendar um, a series of webinars, just like something similar to this and maybe dive a little deeper. Um, so we, that would be a perfect time. And I mean, and then Lindsay's offer of actually doing something for your agency specifically. So I think there are many ways that we can support this effort. And uh, Kim, can you remind me what agency you're in? I feel like I know, but. Oxnard Adult School. Yeah, so we have also Jill and Vicki at the D at DLAC. Um, yeah. So who you can potentially um, work together with and possibly um, use their DLAC, um, their digital leadership, their association with the digital leadership along with to approach your administrators. Just an idea, but we can talk more offline about some of the strategies. But yes, I, I agree. There, there's so much more coming on this topic. Um, if it's okay, let me jump into one of these books because I know, you know, Debbie kind of gave you the overview of what you're going to find in all of them, but, and also a, an effective way to win over your colleagues or decision makers is just to take them into a lesson and give them a tour of a lesson. And then they're like, oh, I get it. This is, this is super powerful. So, um, I'll do a, a science one first, and then we'll jump into a, a math one as well. But this is, um, our, our book on our Flexbook 2.0 platform that's Science High School Equivalency. And you again, can see that it's the partnership of CK12 and OTAN. You can see that it was last modified February 13th, 2021. So this always gives you an idea of was content currently updated? Is this book from 2015? You know, you get some context for it. Um, you can see who the authors are of these books, which includes our original authors, um, as well as Debbie, who was working on it with OTAN. Um, information about the standards. Um, what I appreciate about these books, though, is that we've got all these different chapters, and let's find one that I get excited about. Uh, I'm a former English teacher, so um, you can tell why I'm really pushing for the, for the English teacher stuff, but there's a lesson in here that I love that's on um, physical science, work in machines, and it's on levers. And so when you click on an individual lesson that's part of this flex book, you're taken to a page that presents you automatically with other ways to learn, which as you've been hearing is part of our philosophy of we want students to learn in their own way. Some students learn best by reading the text. Some wanna watch the videos, which is what these are. Um, some might like the simulation, the clicks, or a real world application. And so even before we take them into the lesson, we're always saying, hey, here's some other ways if you're needing to like review, or um, if you have students who are getting ahead and are saying, hey, what can I do next? Um, there's extension activities there for them to do. Um, but this is a 2.0 interface. And um, like, uh, like Debbie was saying, we've got Flexi here in the corner, who is somebody who can talk to you as the teachers or can help the students um, and, and guiding their learning journey. Um, if I scroll down, you're going to see that we have linked to all different concepts here within the lesson. So if I were to click on machine or distance, it would take me to pages that give me information about that. And then within the actual lesson, we've got the video embedded right here, charts and graphs. And then here's a simulation I'll show you in just a second that's embedded right within the lesson. You've got um, a plix that's embedded right within the lesson. And then for instance, some summary and some review questions. Um, a few things that I like to point out at the bottom of the page is that we do have Google Translate available on all of the pages, and this is huge. So um, it's not perfect because it's Google Translate, but it's gotten so much better over the years. For instance, let me go ahead and just switch this to Spanish, and you'll see that all of the text and all of the menu options have been instantly changed to Spanish. Um, so when you're working with adult learners who come in, you know, from, from all different, all different languages that you're not familiar with, um, this, this could be helpful in getting them a head start on navigating through our content or um, their support system, their, their families, their community members um, who speak another language, you can engage them in that way. So just notice that that Google Translate options there at the bottom. 
Um, like Debbie said, we've got an adaptive practice that's attached to all of the lessons. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like real quick. Um, it's set up where students are trying to get 10 questions correct. Um, that's just kind of how we, we set the game of they're trying to get 10 correct. And um, when they go into an adaptive practice, you know, get 10 correct, correct. Yep, I'm gonna start practicing. Um, we have true, false, fill in the blank, drag and drop, um, short answer. We have all different types of questions and it's, it's meant to be practice. So they start off with the zero out of 10 correct. We've got Flexi down here ready to help with hints if they need hints. There is a scratch pad available if we need to sketch anything out. Um, and then you can type in an answer. And I got that one right, yay. So you get a positive message. I've got one out of 10 correct and I go on to the next question. Um, I'm not even gonna read it and I'm probably gonna miss it. <laughs> and um, it's gonna give me another shot. It's gonna say, hey, do you need you know, help? Do you need to go back and do you need to look at this lesson? Do you need hints? Um, I can try the lesson again. Um, I'm gonna miss this again. And so now you can see that my skill level has changed where I'm basically one for two right now. And so I'm still at the beginning skill level meter because I haven't worked my way up to the more difficult questions with any sort of proficiency. So students are trying to for sure get their 10 correct and then they're watching their skill level meter grow um, based on their success rate with the different types of questions. But for your students who are doing well, it's gonna adapt, it's gonna get harder. For your students who need to like go back a little bit, it's going to, the questions are gonna stay in that easy and medium category. And then everybody gets a report. So if you as a teacher have assigned this to your students, you would be able to see a report um, or your students would be able to see one as well. And a basic report kind of looks like this. Um, it's not very interesting because I only spent a minute on this, but it, it'll show you the percentage correct, their best streak. Again, time spent is huge. If your student spent 50 seconds or, or 20 minutes, that would tell you a lot, the skill level, and then the breakdown of different questions. And you can even you know, do a deep dive and see exactly what the student um, typed in as well um, if you're wanting to monitor that. And then practice, they can keep practicing whenever they want. So you can do some before dinner, some after dinner, um, come back in, try to reach that goal of 10. So we find adaptive practice to be a really powerful tool. And again, that's already part of any of our Flexbook 2.0 lessons for most of these books. There may be a couple books, like I don't think the history books, um, the history and government book probably don't have the attached adaptive practice, but for most of those math and science books on that adult education page, each lesson already has this right there attached. Um, so briefly, I don't know how many of you this really affects, but if you're looking to assign these, like Debbie said, Google Classroom is a popular one, Canvas, Schoology, you're just pressing a button at the top and then you would be able to sync to your Google Classroom or you would actually go in through Canvas or Schoology and assign that through where a, a third party app that's installed into those. Um, if you don't have those learning management systems or you're working with you know, a, a smaller group of adult educators, you can use a CK-12 classroom to see the progress. Um, but it's pretty slick as far as, you know, you just say, hey, I'm going to sign this lever lesson. I can give instructions. I can select the start date, the due date. I choose whether or not I want the answers to be shown to the student um, right away or after the due date. So you've got a lot of control over how you want to monitor progress. And you would be able to assign the lesson. Um, and then what Debbie was saying is like the, the latest greatest is our system's gotten really, really, really smart in the past year. We've got all the Silicon Valley AI machine learning people working on it, um, where once you start assigning things to your classes, you are going to get insights that look like this, where it's going to put them on a scatter plot. And Debbie already talked to you through some of these. It's going to make real-time recommendations to you. So um, I like to think of this as kind of the best of all worlds of we can give you a heat map that shows you at a glance how the students are performing, or you can drill down to any individual student um, as much as you want and see exactly how much time they spent on a lesson, um, what their engagement was, what their skill level was. So you can get a lot or a little depending on how you're um, wanting to monitor progress on that. And then a, a couple things, she, she showed you the browse page for a simulation, but um, if I click into this, it shows you um, a, a simulation, which these just started talking. I don't know if it's going to start talking to me in a second, but um, we added some voice to this. But they always start off with this big question like, can Sarah lift her mother on a seesaw? Um, this is labeled a physics simulation, but I've seen this one particular used at the middle school level. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a, a high school physical. It, I, I don't want physics to 
um, intimidate anybody. I think it could be used at all levels with all learners. Um, but it, it's going to take you into a little video introduction and then ask, um, you know, how can we make Sarah? It's going to do this, this, this video introduction. I'm going to scroll over um, where you get to the sandbox area. And then here's where you're actually manipulating variables and trying to figure out what um, is going to make Sarah lift her mom here. Well, she has to be a more of a distance from the fulcrum. She would have to weigh more. You see the real charts and graphs. We've got um, worksheets that go with this. We have challenge questions that go with it. And then at the end, we have these extension activities that show you, you know, what you could learn next. Um, so simulations are really cool. And they're again, right there in the lesson to try to help them, you know, what, what better way to learn what a lever is than actually going through that activity. And then similarly, we have CLICS, which stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore. And we have about 1,200 of these on our site across math and science. And these aren't as elegant as our simulations. They're not that full animated environment. But these are great like five to 10 minute activities where um, there's some sort of simple interaction you're usually doing over here. This one involves moving a red dot, watching that bicep muscle increase. I could add some labels. And then it's going to ask me a series of questions. And again, I can answer the questions. And if I miss it, um, it's going to help me learn why I missed it. I can have hints. I can see the text to help me. It's another like practice learning tool. Um, but I see these a lot as review as, you know, class getting started of like, hey, just, you know, I'm going to take attendance and you start working on this clicks. Um, they're, they're great, just like five to 10 minute short activities discussion, but getting them engaged and getting them to actually see what's happening. So those are kind of the pieces to a lesson. Um, the, when you're in a Flexbook 2.0 lesson here, I know Debbie was saying that she thinks that we've done a good job hiding some things from her, which, which we probably have. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in a Jumpstart demo account right now. And if I'm wanting to get back to kind of that homepage dashboard where it says dashboard classes, library settings, um, I'm able to access that here under my name, um, under the drop down. But then this, these nine squares here, this is actually your toolbar when you're in a Flexbook 2.0 book. And I, I don't want you to overlook that because that's where you can access um, the, the things that you need like insights. Um, I told you that we have all those related activities that we showed you on that start page, and you can find those under related content. Um, you can assign individually or, you know, assign as part of the lesson. Students are able to um, make notes and highlights, and they will show up here in their individual accounts. They can always go back and study um, and see, you know, what they did on any individual lesson, which is, which is huge. You know, digital textbooks, sometimes people are worried that they can't write all over it, but um, CK12 books, you can write all over. Um, you as an educator could add in additional resources. So if you wanted to include um, a, a PDF activity, a PowerPoint, uh, an image, as long as it is um, license compliant, um, that you can add in whatever you like here for your students to be able to access with this lesson as well. And then there's all kinds of things you can do. Like I said, you can assign it. Um, you could also just share it. Maybe you don't want to like get a grade report. You don't care if you get 10 points out of 10 points for completing the assignment in Google Classroom, for instance. Maybe you just want to share it. You can share an individual lesson. All of our resources, our clicks, our sims, our books, they all have a unique URL up here. So you can also just always copy that URL and you can email it to somebody or you can put it in your, um, uh, you know, learning management system, or if you have your own, you know, Google Sites page, or however you're you're, you're working with your learners, um, just know that you can always grab a link and share it with them if you would like. And then here's where I could download a PDF copy if I need the static PDF. And then we also have some um, like display settings here if that helps. Some some students need the font to be bigger, text to be bigger. Um, you know, prefer the dark screen to the light screen, line spacing. So we do have some kind of accessibility um, things for the students there as well. And then navigating the book, again, there's, there's these page tabs here. So I could go to the next lesson. And after lever, we have wheel and axle. I could also go up to the table of contents over here and I could navigate, you know, I'm playing around in physical science, but maybe I wanna look at life science. Let's go to a lesson on cells. Um, I'm able to, uh, you know, let's go into characteristics of life and I can navigate my book this way as well. 
Um, so why don't I like come up for air for just a second and I can't see you guys because I hid my little thing so I could demo. Um, but but based on just kind of like the flow of a, a book, again, what, what you're going to see from the adult page is going to vary slightly depending on how much it's been customized by other users. Debbie was showing you that um, a few of the, the high school diploma books have been like created by a really, really awesome educator um, who's, who's already pared this down. Um, and then some of the books are truly CK-12, totally just CK-12 resources that are going to look, you know, exactly like this in this format. Lindsay, there's a question in the chat. Due to the place that I work, we have restricted internet access. Are there links embedded in the context to other websites that our students can access? And maybe there, she can ask more. Tell us more. Yeah, yeah. Our, you, you can, by nature, obviously, in this type of digital textbook, embed different links. Um, we have tried to strip a lot of those out as far as you know linking to a nasa website or this we find that you know linking to other websites sometimes they expire or go away and that's something we can't really control um so you're not going to find a ton of just like loosey-goosey external links but what you lose i guess if you were to print this download this as a pdf um so i could download this as a pdf they would still get the image they would get that text um, but if we had any clicks or simulations embedded in this, or here's this video, it's not going to show up in the printed out book. Obviously they wouldn't be able to access this video. Um, but perhaps you click on the video and you jot down the YouTube address. And if they get online at some point, you know, access it later. Um, so, so yeah, you, lo you lose the interactivity, but I, I think most people, um, find workarounds to that solution. And then again, if you're somebody who you just need the text and you need to get it to your students for whatever reason offline, um, at, at a minimum, we can do that for you. What else is happening in the chat? I don't have the chat open. Is there anything, anything exciting happening in there? <laughs> I think we've overwhelmed everyone. Well, that, that, that is something we fight at CK12 is that we do overwhelm people because there's so, there's so much here. So let me, let, me, let me back out to the very beginning and um, just show you a, a few other like starting from basics because you're going to leave the session today and you're going to be like, okay, you know, maybe you're going to think about it tomorrow or maybe it's going to be two months or maybe it's going to be next year. I have no idea when you're going to come back to this and it's going to make an impact. Hopefully at some point it is. Um, but, but two places that you're going to want to go, you can always just go to ck12.org, which is our landing page. And I told you there's no paywall, no anything like that. Um, but you do want to set up an account at some point. So you would identify yourself as a teacher. Um, if, if that's the domain you're in, your students would, could be students. Um, but you just need to set up an account totally free. And then since you've had an account set up, that's when we can start tracking your progress and storing things in your library and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, and then the menu option that I really like from the homepage is this explore menu because it has quick links to a lot of what we just talked about. Um, we just talked about uh, our Flexbook 2.0. I showed you adaptive practice, simulations, clicks. Um, links to the standards, that certified educator program we've been talking about, upcoming webinars. Um, so you can go directly to a lot of landing pages here. Um, or again, in the subjects, that's what we were looking at before, where it divides it all up by subjects. And this is your easy access to always going back to um, our adult education page. And so you've got full access here to all of these books. And we've, we've tried to kind of cherry pick what we think the most useful resources are for in the space of adult education. And again, links to how to integrate with Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology. And then even some quick overview videos here on like bite-sized tips on how to get started. And then like I said the all important, my email address of you just say, hey, I was in your session. Uh, let's set up a time to chat. I wanna talk more about this. Um, this, is, this is your way to get in touch with me. And, and we're, we're a small nonprofit where we actually are able to do that kind of like handholding. We enjoy working with individual users. Um, so lean on this page, the, the CK12 logo always takes you back out to the homepage. And so like I said, you can explore by resource or check out by subject. Um, hang out in this adult education section that we're going to continue to be building out with more resources. This is just what we've launched with today on, you know, beginning of March, 2021. Nettie, you've got a hand up. 
I do. And I wanted to circle back to um, Archana's comment in the very beginning, uh, looking forward to this as I'm still learning how to customize the content for my students. So how are you feeling when, um, you know, looking at this now after this presentation about customizing content? And do you have specific questions, Archana? I know you've kind of looked at this. Uh, I'm going to unmute myself. So this, this looks great. And I have been using, and I'm going to go back, talk to my department chair again. Uh, I use um, CK12 for primarily math. Okay. My only, you know, the hurdle I always feel is, um, you know, I don't want to put the whole lesson if I'm doing like, you know, um, real numbers. I don't want, you know, the whole lesson to be assigned to my students because it's it's so it's too overwhelming for them. Is there any way I can look at just one worksheet at a time that I can post or share? Sure, sure. It, for instance, is there is there a, a what book closely aligns to what you're? Um, you can pick about anyone. You know, a math. You know, maybe um, a HSE math or something or any page, whatever is easy uh, for you. Yeah. So, so let's foundations math foundational math perfect okay. okay so let's look at that because we, we we've talked about the ability to customize but just just briefly hopefully this would would help you of if if you decide okay you're like this is the book that i want to start with for some of my um teachers you can absolutely or educators you can absolutely copy and paste this link like i said you can also start adding it to your library if you're like okay this is a book that i want to bookmark basically book adding to your library is like creating a bookmark. So it'll always be there for you. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my library. So it's always in my library anytime I need it. But you have the option to customize this book however you'd like. So I'm going to click customize. And what's basically happened is that it's made a copy of the CK12 adult learner book and put it into your library. So what you're going to do now, it's not going to affect the master copy of the book. This is just your copy you're playing around with. And you have all of these controls here. And so you can open up any of these individual chapters. And um, this is, again, Flexbook features. This is something that um, a, a teacher created. But if you're like, you know, I don't want that introduction, you can just press the X and you could remove it. And it will be gone and you will start with full number review. So at a chapter level, um, the first thing you probably want to do is figure out the scope and sequence of like, okay, we're going to do most of these whole number reviews. You know, uh, we're never going to get to ratios and proportions. So I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to remove that chapter. I'm going to remove percents. And then I'm going to teach um, how to multiply and divide fractions before um, number and patterns. Good luck. But that's, that's, that's what we're going to do. And then same thing within these individual sections of you can remove the individual lessons or rearrange them of, hey, we're not going to do this, whatever, remove. So once you get your like scope and sequence the way that you like and say, all right, this is pretty good. Um, you could also add new lessons that either you have created or you can search our library. If you're like, I know CK12 has this awesome lesson on whatever, it's not in this book. You can go to the CK12 library and you can pull resources into your book. Um, and then within these individual lessons, um, let me, well, actually, let me go ahead and and save this. I'm going to save these changes. So you're going to see that my, my book has now been customized. It's now the jumpstart demo book because that's the account I'm in last modified just now. Um, but I can go into any of these sections and um, I can say, okay, I like part of this lesson, but I don't like all of this lesson. And so I have the ability to um, press customize at this level as well. And that would be under my toolbar. And then I can edit. And it's going to take you to our editor. And this will be familiar to you. It's going to look like a Google editor or a, a Microsoft Word doc or something where you're able to, um, just like, am I frozen? Um, you're able to change the title if you want. And then you're able to go into the lesson and you can um, customize it as much or as little as you want. So if you're like, mm, that's, I don't really like that picture. I'm going to delete that. Um, I actually don't like this whole introduction. I don't want my students to do these examples. I'm going to delete that. Um, you know, I don't want the answers to be at the bottom. I'm going to delete that. I want, uh, you know, 
you're able to add in whatever you want. If you want to add in images and you want to add in your own videos, your own instructions, um, you've got the options to do that. Insert image, insert media, um, add headers, all that kind of stuff. So you can customize it however you want. And then when you finalize the draft, you're going to see that I've now deleted that image and some random text. Um, so my lesson just starts here with reading a decimal in words. And you can always go in and edit it anytime. So I can, I can change this again tonight, I can change it. And, you know, over the summer, this is your living textbook um, idea. And so uh, assigning individual lessons, if I assigned this lesson, it would just assign lesson 3.2 on decimals. And the grade that's going to be passed back to uh, me is going to be on this either quiz or adaptive practice that's attached. And this one has a quiz attached. Um, that's going to be the grade that's going to be reported back to Google Classroom. All of the other things that you can do within a lesson, um, that's just going to be tracked as far as insights where you can see what a student was being, what student was clicking on. Um, so specifically back, back to your question on um, if, if you only want pieces of it, that's how you customize a lesson and maybe adapt what you want the lesson to look like. But say you're like, hey, I just want, I like those clicks. I think clicks are great. I need a five to 10 minute activity. I don't want the lesson and everything that goes with it. Just go to our Plix browse page, find the category that you're looking for. Of, you know, we're in arithmetic. Somebody mentioned that earlier. I'm gonna click on this one. Um, this is, you know, find a Plix that's got some challenge me questions that you like. And as I said, you can either just share the URL or if you want to actually get feedback on if the student um, opened up and interacted with this Plix, then you can assign it here as well. So that's, I guess, my big tip to you is um, to always press this logo to go, go out to the homepage, again, the explore menu option. Same thing, I could go to adaptive practice and I could just assign adaptive practice if I wanted. So if I wanted to just do earth science adaptive practice, I could find my individual um, subject and assign that and it wouldn't come with the whole lesson and the videos and the interactivity. It would just drill them into the practice. Does that help folks navigate? I think you're, you're going to have to, again, you're, you're going to have to step away from this and then come back and like go to ck12.org and just start clicking around and be like, oh yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the piece that I'm looking for. And, you know, it, it takes a little bit of exploration to, to get, to get comfortable with it. Lindsay, can you show them the flexlets that you guys adapted for the online environment that we're all dealing with, with COVID and stuff? So they're yeah, so sure great. Yeah, thing. sure thing. A um, couple different ways to, to get to it. Um, under this Explore menu, we've got flexlets right over here. Or under Subjects, um, you'd see that we've got Math flexlets and Science flexlets. And basically, uh, our math team and our science team um, took the larger flex books and said, all right, if we needed to just do a crash course on this and we needed to like pare it down to the essential topics of, you know, what would be the most essential. So these are just shorter versions of the larger books. And people were using this over the summer to kind of like help fill the gaps of, you know, hey, my kid's going into eighth grade, but, uh, you know, never really quite picked up on that, that information. Um, so they've got all these different flexlets. Um, these, we haven't, we haven't translated these specifically to adult education yet, but if you liked any of these, if you're like, you know, this prep is actually pretty good. Um, like I said, you can take any of our resources, even the flexlets, customize it, give it a different name. So it's not prep for seventh grade math of, you know, that it's, you know, Ken Cade's my last name, adult education class. Um, call it whatever I want. I can change this image. I can, you know, remove whatever sections I don't want. And then within a few minutes, I can have my own book. Here's my own link. You know, my flex, my flex book, Kincaid's adult education link. Um, this cover would change if I changed the cover. Um, I can change this text. So that's, that's kind of the process that I guess you would want to think about is which resource do you like that gets you close? Do you want to press that customize button and make a few tweaks to it? Um, then it can it can really be um, specific to your learners. Debbie, what do you think? Um, oh, golly, so much give, that. Yeah, um, maybe 
maybe a few, I think we're, we've probably got a few minutes before. I know that they need to be heading on to their next sessions or break or whatever's next, but um, a few things that might help you. Again, this help button um, when you're navigating and you say, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a teacher parent. Um, I mentioned a quiz earlier, but I didn't show you how to make a quiz. And so later on, if you're like, ah, oh, how do you do quiz? Right here, how to create a quiz. Um, in that help center article, or if you're looking for more information on, um, you know, anything, how to interpret different reports or what's going on with the insights, you can put it into the help center. Um, another place where we include a lot of tutorials um, is on our webinars page, where we have recordings of, um, it doesn't like that, it might be because I'm, I think, I think I'm on, I'm on a VPN to access, long story, but if you go to webinars, it'll, it'll show up and I'll show you the um, most recent webinars, most recent recording of the webinars that we've done. And at the bottom of the page, it will also have quick overview videos that are like those bite sized like I said, minute and a half, two minutes to get you started. So those are good places to get you started or um, our, our new favorite link, ck12.org slash adult ed. Um, we tried to put the key components here so we can give you more information for teachers and students specifically. And then we take you to those different pages um, here. And then we can link you to those quick overview videos down at the bottom of the page. So if all else fails, just use adult ed as your anchoring point for, for navigating the site. Thank you. That's very good. Anybody else have something um, that, that you're going, oh, oh, can you show us that again? I, I've gone over the few years that I've worked with CK12, and a lot of it is very intuitive. Even when I wasn't using the shortcuts, I could still manage. It was, you just kind of go, okay. And I was often in my, um, in my library, because that's where I would work on my textbooks. And you can filter those by the kinds of materials that you have. Um, so that you can just see what you're, you know, maybe the thing you did most recently, um, but filter by source, was it created by me or by, if it's, is it a flexbook too, or was it a workbook? And so you can find the things that you've gathered because I'm the kind of person that if I see it and I like it, I want it. And so my library is rather large and unusable. <laughs> so the filters are very, very nice because then I can gather what I want to show or what I want to work on and find it pretty easily. Um, so that was always something very, very good. Um, if you want to become CK12 certified, don't be afraid of that. It's wonderful. They work on the, uh, uh, they're just walking you through. They're going to give you some assignments to do some of these things and then they walk you through it. And so, um, I wanted to do it because I wanted to use CK12 and I wanted to kind of know what I needed to do. And so that was a really great thing and I'm grateful that I did it. Um, let me go back and give you the contact information so that once again, you'll know how to find things. Any last questions before we go from the live? No? Okay, all right, then I'm going to share. Oops, I can't share because we're sharing. Oh. Hey, Debbie, I uh -huh. think we are having, um, we're going to need to share the link for the presentation again. It's giving okay. me an uh, error code. Okay. And then there are a couple of uh, questions. Any tricks for making downloadable PDFs for off offline use? And Christina, I have a pretty specific question about a Plix integrated into Canvas. I know that Corona Norco is using CK12 with Canvas, so. Okay, Lindsay, go ahead and you do that and then I'll give them the addresses in the... Um, sure, uh, I don't know about your specific Plix Canvas question. I don't know if that's gonna be out of my league or not. Um, the One of the pages that I would refer you to where it says integrate with CK12 is that we have this Canvas page here. Uh, let me get off this VPN. I'm worried. So I'm, let me try this again. You have access to all these pages. My computer is just, just, just being strange at the moment. Um, this Canvas page should answer a lot of the questions about integrating, um, installing, completing assignments, troubleshooting, seeing reports. 
And so I don't know if this would answer your specific Flix question. If not, um, if you could just send an email to that partners at ck12.org, um, likely I'll probably have to escalate it to the guy who runs Canvas um, and get you an answer to that. So sorry for the for, sorry for the non-answer, but these pages give you some information about that. And then um, for anything else, partners at ck12.org. And then for the downloads, like I said, um, with the books, if you've customized a book and you want to do a download either of the whole book or of individual sections, um, you are able to download as a PDF. So this is that book that I just changed the title on. I could download it. It's going to email you a link to the PDF and that's going to be the whole book. Um, or I could do that at any of these other levels too. So if I just want to, you know, take this and get a download, I can go over into my toolbar. And one of my toolbar options is going to be to download the PDF. And so that's how you get the offline access to those. Excellent. So you can do it small if you want the students to be able to write on it, or you can do it large if your district is struggling with the online. So that's great. All right, let me put our contact information in the chat. Just a second, where's the chat? There. Hey, um, folks, and I, and I tried to submit that, uh, the site again. So hopefully you can have access to it. And also a reminder um, in the chat, I've also added the link to the evaluation. Um, so you can access the evaluation now. We'd love to hear from you and what you feel about this presentation. And then underneath that is a link to um, the slide deck that Debbie and Lindsay used today. Okay, let me put that on the screen for you. I will share. Thank you, Fig. Thank you, Peg, for um, confirming that. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's our contact information. Can you all see it? I've got the right screen. Yay. Okay, and there's the presentation. I can show you what it's going to look like. Uh, it's uh, where I put my presentations, and so it's just the top one. Um, and so it's a PDF, and so you'll have it there. So you can go to that. Um. Okay, um, Christina, I, so I think for that Canvas question, you're going to contact uh, partners at ck12.org. Perfect. Fantastic. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I think I was on mute. Um, can she show me the flow one more time or tell me the flow? So I went to the help center, right? Let me stop sharing just to, to learn about Canvas. Is that what you said? Yeah, just to find that troubleshooting icon. I'm like, I think that's the one I need. <laughs> that's actually at uh, ck12.org slash canvas should get you. Oh, there. okay. Um, try this page and see if that, and that's that's linked from the adult ed page. Oh, perfect. Thank and you. And that very gives much. you kind of the everything you need to know about CK12's integration with Canvas. And then if, if that doesn't solve your problem, like I said, just, just shoot me a quick email and I'll get it um, troubleshooted for you by by the team. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Thank you.